Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to Prospect Station 101. My name is Chris Robbins, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys another QIB film breakdown. Uh, this will be part 6, I believe, of the series. Uh, and today, as you guys can see on your screen, we are going to be taking a look at one of my favorite prospects in this entire class, actually, Jair Alexander. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to throw this out there right off the bat. I am kind of a legal fan. Not going to lie. Um, so this might be a little bit biased in some ways, but hopefully you guys can see why I like him so much uh, and and why I am a fan of his. So, uh, as you guys can see, he is a little small. I will throw that right off the bat. He is listed at 5'10 and 2'8. Uh, he does come in at 196, so he's almost at that 200 mark. Uh, very similar arm length, uh, over 9 inch hands at 9.5. Uh, so I'm not really concerned about his arms, uh, which are the same as Josh Jackson, actually, uh, or his hands, uh, which are quite a bit bigger than Denzel Ward's. Uh, my biggest concern here is with his uh, height. He's only 5'10". Uh, so that does project to be more of a nickel corner uh, from size alone. Uh, but I will say that he definitely uh, does well outside as well. Uh, I think he has potential there. It could be a smaller outside corner. Uh, and hopefully we can see some of that and why I personally think that uh, throughout this breakdown. Uh, so as you guys can see, uh, he is a third year junior. He did declare with remaining eligibility. Uh, pretty young, born in 97, actually only a few months before me. Uh, Louisville School, uh, not exactly the best pro developer of talent, although they have had a couple of decent prospects. Uh, and he was, of course, a corner. Uh, so, uh, going to the background here, he's from North Carolina. Uh, almost makes me wonder if the Panthers could be a fit right off the bat. As we start recruit, he started as a freshman, technically a game, so I won't really count that. Uh, though he did play as a freshman, if I remember correctly. Uh, and of course, he has a two-year starter, what a team captain. Uh, definitely a high character guy, and we see that a lot. Uh, well, in high school, he committed to UNC as there was only offer, and then committed to South Carolina until being swayed by the cards. Uh, so, and one thing I will say is that he is injured uh, this year. Well, he is not injured now, but he was injured this year. Uh, so, I will be showing you guys some of his 16 tape as well. Uh, that way we can get a little bit of a broader idea on what he could do when he was at his best. Uh, I will say that even from an unbi even from a biased standpoint here, I do think that he was a lot better in 16 than he was in 17. Uh, and we can pretty much tell that that injury uh, in week one against Purdue limited him uh, in, in a lot of ways the rest of the year uh, when he was actually able to get back on the field. Uh, so, uh... I'm going to go off here, and I've already done a little bit of a scouting report on him as well. Uh, obviously, I'm a Cards fan, so I've seen a lot of him uh, throughout the last few years. And uh, one thing I have noted in my, in my chart, we already talked about his character. Uh, and one thing I'm going to be looking to show you guys is how he communicates uh, on the back end. Uh, he does a great job of communicating with the secondary, he's a great leader. Uh, and shows up in a significant way as well. Uh, and also, another thing too that you guys are going to see later on in this video, uh, I'm going to point out, I don't know if he really shows it too much in the Florida State game, because if I remember right, this was a blowout. Uh, but he's also going to be someone who comes in clutch as well. Uh, so uh, I'm definitely really looking to focus on not only the technical side of what I like about Jair as well, but the mental side. Uh, and how he is with these intangible aspects of his game that make me believe that he's going to have success at the NFL level. One thing that I personally like to look for, and a lot of these guys, maybe it's because I my Lions background, but I really want to see these guys' floors. Uh, the Lions in particular are one of those teams that really look for high floor guys, even if they don't necessarily have the highest ceiling. Uh, and they look for guys who are going to be able to come in day one and contribute immediately. Uh, and I think that that's exactly what you're going to be getting with Jair. I mean, I'm assuming he passes his medicals. He seemed to be long, long past him. He was able to play and everything, didn't get re-injured. 
so I'm assuming he's going to be fine there, just a one-time injury. Uh, but uh, assuming that he's fully recovered back up to 100%, which, judging by his combine, I would absolutely have to say he is, uh, we should be looking at him to make a day one impact. So anyway, uh, enough preview here. Let's just get right into the film so I can show you guys uh, why I like him much. Uh, so he's going to be number 10. Uh, generally lined up on opposing teams number ones. This was, of course, in 16, so this is actually Andre Francois. One thing I will note about him, and you actually see this on the first play, and this is probably my biggest uh, negative with him, is he does seem to come off lack of physicality at times, and you see him get pushed around a little bit uh, by bigger receivers. I think part of that is size, uh, and the fact that he's only 5'10", he maybe doesn't have as strong of a base uh, as some of the other more physical corners in this class. Uh, there are definitely other corners if you're looking for an edge type of guy. Uh, in this class that would probably be better for you. He doesn't have as much of an issue as the item, for example, with getting off of his blocks though, uh, which I do think is going to work out for him. Uh, obviously it would be nice to see him learn a move, a disengage move uh, to some degree, but uh, he still finds a way to get off receivers blocks every once in a while to get on on tackles. Very, very smooth, and again, this is the kind of technical stuff that I really wanted to point out. Uh, we're going to see him in off while he generally plays at the line, which is something else I like. Uh, he, he can definitely play off, and he has the speed and, and quickness to be able to play off. So you just see him lined up in a very, very clean, smooth back pedal. Very, very good job of staying at his base and able to break out of that at any, at any second to make a play on the ball. Zone look here. And again, even in zone, just a very clean, smooth, no wasted movement back pedal. And there's where I talk about his lack of physicality and, and, and his lack of willingness to tackle. Right, so on this play, uh, I would honestly, he's right here. I want to see him finish continuing to break on that instead of trying to move around the guy and, and, and do this and that and slow down. I want to see him get involved and, and try and make a tackle on that play. Uh, so that is very, very clearly my biggest weakness with him. Again, just no wasted movement, he's so fluid. In a lot of ways, he reminds me of what I liked about Marshawn Lattimore last year, uh, the corner from Ohio State now plays for the Saints, when actually won Defensive Rookie of the Year uh, in New Orleans this year. He's so fluid, so quick in space, ran about the same 40, I believe. Uh, they're, they're both quick and fast. And, and more importantly, they're just so fluid. And you see how quickly he opens, how smoothly he opens. He's not at all tight with his his motion, and that's really, really nice to be able to quick, keep up with quick route running receivers. Nice three on that play. It takes the outside gap. Unfortunately, linebackers don't help. If he runs, he's able to catch up to him easy. He's just not trying to make that tackle. If you can get him wanting to tackle, he's going to be one of the best players in this class on the defensive side of the ball. That's simple.
Blitz play here, and he just comes right off for that football. Now, one thing that I will say about this is this is kind of being picky, uh, but he is showing Blitz here. Actually, first off, before we go into this any further, I will say, uh, from a base standpoint, at this point, obviously this is 16, I would like him to be a little bit more knee-bendy uh, instead of forward. Uh, also, I really want him to be a little bit more out as well instead of in. Uh, being picky, I do like where his, his base is though. And yeah, again, also being picky, uh, I really don't want to see him show blitz on this play, even though he is a blitzer. Uh, just stay where you are and, and use your athleticism and quickness to, to bend inside. But yeah, you see his quickness and explosion. He just gets all the way in on Dalvin. Easy fumble recovery. Again, very clean, smooth back pedal. Does a great job of breaking on that ball. Nice contested catch by the receiver, but Jair did everything he had to do there. Very patient. I like how he mirrors receivers. Uh, doesn't try to be over aggressive with the line with his press. And yeah, you see that fluidity. You just watch how quickly he opens here. You're going to see him in his base a little bit better of a base this time. I like how he's a little bit more out and a little bit more bendy. And bam, he just opens up so quick. I'm playing... Quite a ways off here. They do have him playing off a little bit more in this game. I almost wonder why. Hmm. Okay, let's see what happens here. It looks to be some kind of some kind of man. And yeah, you just seem open up to the outside. I like how he enforced the boundary on that play as well. Just so smoothly, he opens out very, very cleanly on the outside. Also, another thing I like about this play too is when he opens, he doesn't lose check of the wide receiver. Uh, that is one issue that I've been keeping an eye on for some of these guys. Uh, is you, when you see them open, they almost open too quickly in a way without using their vision to their best effectiveness. See how when he opens, he mirrors the receiver. He doesn't completely open all the way up and start running down the field in case there's a hitch or a curl or a comeback. He does a nice job of just mirroring and matching the receiver's movements and, and trying to stick with him and not lose sight of the receiver. He's trying to be overly aggressive. He's still able to do his job and, and man up the receiver without overcompensating, which is really nice to see. Up here, 
That guy, when we see him actually in that frame communicating with defunks. Just so clean and smooth with his back pedal. I love his footwork. And look, oh, that was probably OPI. I have to see a different look at it, but. A little bit wide with the feet. Oh, that's because he's transitioning to off. And just so clean and smooth with his, with his feet. Down the line. I love how he stays in phase this whole play through. Now, it's kind of hard to see him uh, because they focus on the quarterback, of course. But from the frames that we get right there, look at, he's actually ahead of the receiver. And that's impressive. I believe that's on Tate actually as well. And then right here in this frame, the ball is still way up here somewhere. I mean, that ball's not even on its, on its break yet. And he's already got his head around. The dude is so natural with getting his head around and doing ball tracking. And then right there, look at how he's able to change direction with his feet and stop on a dime. His, his quickness with his feet, his footwork is top tier. And still tracking the ball, he's not focusing that much on the receiver. He's just play on the ball and get the ball out of the receiver's hands. Goes through the football when he needs to. Easy, easy pass breakup. Makes it look like it's his job. Because he is. So clean and smooth out of his break, out of his back pedal, I mean. The dude has some of the cleanest, quickest, and fastest feet in this class. They have him playing off a lot in this game. And so patient. You see the patience there. Oh, that wasn't even close to a receiver. Goodness. There we go. We see him playing tight at the line. Again, I do wish that he had a little bit more bend, uh, but not the worst stance in the world. And again, we talk about him mirroring receivers. This play right here is a perfect example of that. See how he's not turned all the way around? He didn't open up completely and, and forget about the wide receiver going free behind him. He's still playing the receiver at this point in the route. But I love, look how early he gets his head around for this football. That is fantastic. And then, after the ball is thrown, a couple yards down the field, he's very confident this receiver is right behind him. He's able to get completely open, track the ball. Unfortunately, he was able to get both feet down. That's a great catch by Tate. So, there's obviously a lot of things to like here, but I think that that pretty much exemplifies just the base of what we're looking for here, uh, and that's how smooth he is as an athlete, both with quickness, agility, and speed, uh, as well as his United years, which is his willingness to tackle. Uh, so just a, a very broad and base look here. Uh, now in this game here, we're going to see a little bit more of the specifics and what I really, really love about him, uh, and, and, and why he's going to be that impact player. So, of course we've seen what we like about him and, and his biggest positives in, in Night Ghost, but hopefully this game will give us a little bit more of a specific in-depth look. So obviously this is against Deshaun Watson, Clemson, eventual national champion. So you know all about that. Again, I wish he were a little bit more bendy. I wish his feet were a little bit tighter. But just look at how smoothly he opens. This is so brilliant. Just bam, right out. And just mirroring and matching. He's not completely going all out and over being over aggressive. 
He tries to shed the blocks, does a very nice job with that. Just really needs to be more aggressive. Bam, patient out of his press. I love his patience out of his press. A lot of corners, they're so over aggressive out of their presses, and it gets them basically caught from the get. They get beat on the release. Jair is not someone who gets beat off of these releases. In fact, this frame actually shows you perfectly here. He's playing tight at the line, but he's just watching, waiting for that receiver to make a break. It's almost uh, similar to like a Chris Harris and what a Chris Harris does. And then you see a mirroring match, standing face with Mike Williams all the way down the field. Fantastic. Also, return ability. Uh, he is quick and fast. He does have a little bit of a spin move as well. We have seen return punts uh, and kickoffs, but more so punts uh, for as, as much as touchdowns. I don't think he has one in this game. He might. While they're showing this, uh, one thing I am going to say as well uh, is that he does have a, a high motor, high work ethic, uh, as we've already talked about, high character as well, uh, but he doesn't really give up on plays a lot uh, outside of just willingness to tackle. Uh, and he does also seem to have that, that good practice attitude as well. I'm just so good at mirroring. I love his ability to mirror routes, and especially against uh, in, 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 in man press. Just see how smooth he is at mirroring Mike Williams' eye was cut. Gets into a side, gets into a side step when he's like immediately there, and then just completely flows wide out. Does a great job of staying pretty close to the receiver here. Not exactly in phase, I would say, but he's still in a good position to make a play on the football. And then that recovery speed at the end of the play is able to get back through. Let's just watch here. He gets a little bit behind the receiver in bail tech, but he still does a great job of seeing in. And then you see at the last minute, he turns on your gear and gets into recovery speed. He's so, so quick. And bam, you see his ability to read and react, right? So while he's not exactly the most willing tackler, you see his ability to make plays against the run. Your only issue with him is that he's an unwilling tackler. He can break on balls, he can attack, he's good at reading run plays. Like right here, you see his quickness out of his break. He reads that this is a, uh, uh, gosh, I forgot what it's called already. A, um, option play, I forgot the option. Speed option. Uh, and he's just so quick to break on this ball. And then you see his speed and acceleration right off the bat. He just, you need to get him to finish. He's so good in the first two thirds of these plays. It's that final third against the run that's going to really knock you down on him. If he finished, if he was, if he could tackle, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad if someone called him the top 10 prospect in this class. I would probably have him in my top 10. Nice first punch on that play as well. Doesn't, as I mentioned earlier, he's not overly aggressive with it, uh, but he still has a little bit of a nice first punch to him. You'll see it right at the line here. Just bam, knocks Mike Williams back. One of the stronger receivers in college last year. Well, two seasons ago, but same thing. Top of the screen. It's just so good at mirroring. Here, catch. Another thing I will say as well is that he hasn't had any issues with balance either. 
Uh, he hasn't choked, hasn't fell, anything like that. Again, does a great job of reading the wrong play. I just really wish he were more active in, in trying to tackle. And that's not a motor issue, because we see him going for all these plays, and we see him on punt returns, we see him on, uh, on pass plays, where he's going all out for every play, it's just that he's so unwilling to tackle. I don't think that that's necessarily a motor issue. And we see him come up on the play, and again we see we uh, we see that football character as well at the end of this play. He's just gonna come up and get engaged with his teammates. Nice first punch. Disengage. Again, does a great job of disengaging, and you see him finish for the play, right? Like you see him still pursuing the ball carrier and everything. It's just that he doesn't get on yet. He holds up at the tackle. I want to see him tackle people. It's almost like he's afraid of... He's getting, getting run over. He's so fluid with his movements. In fact, that's the pick play, isn't it? Yeah. Interception. So what I like about this play here is, again, we just see him do a great job of mirroring, right? He gives up that inside release in order to take that outside leverage. And he just stays with him, stays with him. A little bit of recovery speed in there when he gets a bit far inside. A little bit out of phase here, which is why Watson is throwing it at this moment. He notices that Jair is a little bit out of phase. But the recovery speed and your ability to make up ground on Williams are fantastic. He's so explosive, and he's got such a nice burst. And we see it from this position too, we see him right there, right there, it's, and you see Watson does a great job of timing this throw, releasing this as soon as Jagger gets out of phase on this cut. But what I love about him so much is that he's able to recover from that, and he's just completely break on this ball. And bam, just undercuts the route so cleanly. And just seals it right from him. Communicating with the defense. Bam! And again, another thing we talk about is athleticism, right? Watch him open out and then in here, right? So right there you see him open out. But then, uh, I believe that might be Kane, actually. Takes that inside. So he just reverses. He does a complete 180 there. And he still doesn't lose anything. His hips are so fluid. And again, we see recovery speed. Gets a little bit behind and out of phase with the receiver here. Right there, you see him about a step or two behind. But he just closes that gap so quickly. And again, getting his head around for the football. A very, very good job of, of discipline, staying disciplined, and ball tracking. And as a result, you see him able to, to get that pass deflection. So smooth. And you see, uh, I believe 3 is Deion King. You see him come up complaining for this penalty, right? He's not getting that called. There's no way they're calling it because Shire does such a good job of getting his head around and going and, and making a play on the football and off the receiver. And that's what I wanted to see that first play. I mentioned versus Florida State uh, on that Woods play where he covers that fumble from Devin Cook. How he stays on his on his receiver and then just uses his quickness and athleticism to bring him to the inside on the Woods plays. That's what he does here. Bam! Right off the snap, you see him burst. First step. That's what I wanted to see versus Florida State. 
And as a result, you see him as, as the fourth player. There's just no linebacker that's able to stop number nine. I believe that's Goldman. That's just poor interior defending. But Jair did a great job as fourth player and just to decide to take it up the middle because of that. But he has that first step. He has the explosion to burst. He has the quickness. He has the first step. I mean, there's not really too much that he can't do. I just really wish he could tackle. Communicating with the defense, obviously, we've talked about that several times. Just pointing out another example. Patience, not overcommitting to any of these these route any of these plays. Just really wanna see him be more aggressive. Getting on the tackle. And then when he's there, he's the last guy left, he he can tackle. He just isn't willing to. So clue so clean with his sidestep. Mean coverage. Or zone, I mean. Oh, what a hit by 11. Yeah, that was clean zone. Just so smooth with his back pedal. It does a great job of mirroring as well. And it's so consistent. I talk on a lot of these about consistently consistency and about how I want to see guys do the same good things over and over and over again. And that's what you're getting with Jair. When he makes a mistake tackling, it's consistently not tackling. It's the same big issue. Just something that you know you're going to have to work with him on or you're going to have to deal with it. On the other hand, you're getting the same consistent positives over and over and over again. Ability to play both man and zone, ability to match and mirror routes, ability to uh, uh, athleticism, just in general. He has the speed, the quickness, the agility, the acceleration, the versus the explosion, all that good stuff. The ability to ball track or just head around, not commit penalties. All of these good traits are so consistent on basically every single game you watch. Communicating with the defense, of course, which is why I paused that there. And just you see that first step burst and explosion, but you want to see him getting on that play. It does kind of at the end, but. Actually, you know what? If I remember correctly, he breaks this one. Oh, yes, that's what I liked about this play, right? So, awareness, right? This play, this football is actually going to go off of his own guy here. And Jagger does a great job of recognizing that. So, he was initially calling off, right? And you'll see him at this play, right? Here, he's seeing off. Poison, poison, right? But that ball goes off of his own teammate, so he recovers that. Just makes the guys miss. So smooth. And his athleticism. And he picks the policy of yards because of that. Fantastic. Very similar to Pat Pete in some ways, Patrick Peterson. So clean and smooth with his patience. And you see, while he can backpedal, we've obviously seen that he can. He does a great job of backpedaling consistently. Very, very fine, refined footwork. What we're going to notice here is how patient he is with his feet, right? 
So this receiver trying to fake him out, get him out in double move, all this stuff, right? He's just doing a great job of staying so patient, so well balanced in his, in his stance. And then he eventually gets out when the receiver gets past him. He does a great job of staying patient. And again, we just see that, that patience. I love how he's not willing to be overly aggressive and overly uh, undisciplined mentally. Obviously, this is a pass play. You see Watson dropping back, making these reads, particularly this receiver here. So he's defending this corner route. He decides to break out. Unfortunately for him, it's just a seam. But look at what he does. He can tackle. He can't. Problem is he doesn't. But watch this, right? Goal line. Down by nine. In a battle of top five teams. Both teams 4-0. Both teams top of their games on the road in Death Valley and Clemson. Late in the third quarter. Need a big play. Clemson, Deshaun Watson is driving. What does he do? He forces a fumble. He goes for the ship to get that big play, he, he gets it. Comes in clutch. In big moments. Big games, big moments. Just look at him ship for that football. Goes for the ship. Knocks it out. Fantastic. The dude creates turnovers they don't just see my problem with a lot of cornerbacks especially ones that are that tend to go high I, this is my biggest problem with justin gilbert for instance when he originally came out was that he didn't create turnovers right he was just the right place right time he was just there they were bad throws they were zone plays where he was just in in his zone or whatever he wasn't really making turnovers happen. Whereas with Jair, you see him undercut that route to create that turnover, right? You see him strip for the ball to create the turnover. I mean, you see him create turnovers. They don't just happen. Like these corners. That's one thing as a Detroit Lions fan, that I absolutely love about Darius Slay, right? A lot of his plays aren't necessarily right, right place, right time. They're not necessarily him just being there or his assignment, right? They're plays that he creates. He breaks on the ball. He's aggressive in, in, in reading plays. He's so good with his hands and breaking on routes. And you see that with Jair. Ended up recovering it. I do really want to see more more bend. Such a great job of matching. And then just watch how he stays in phase and gets this pick. So another thing too, right? I keep on talking about how he mirrors and matches routes. Now watch how this play develops, right? So right here, you see him mirror and match, and this is why it's so important. And he's not overcommitting this play. He gives up this inside release, but watch what happens. Despite him giving up this inside release to Williams, he's able to win to the inside. He's able to recover from that and get inside when this play is thrown to his inside. Right? He does a great job of staying in phase with the receiver. And again, ball tracking. Gets his head around. Makes a play on the ball first. As a result, up by one, 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter on the road in the top five team, undefeated Clemson, who would eventually become national champions, led by the easy first round pick, one of the better rookie quarterbacks last year, Deshaun Watson, gets picked. Easy.
with his teammates there getting fired up. A little bit of attitude there. He's not Jalen Ramsey, but he's still AJ Boye from an attitude standpoint. Just big plays in big moments, in big games. I don't want to see, I do, I would prefer to see him hands catch, and we did see him having issue with that at the gauntlet, I believe, uh, in Indy, is I do want to see him with a hands catch more often, uh, but that's being picky, he still gets those picks. Let's play. Does a great job of occupying the block, but then disengaging from it, right? Any attempts to go in for the tackle, at least, before getting absolutely hammered by Kirk Kelsey. Oh, okay, that was not me. It's a phone machine. Just stays engaged, and then he disengages and brings him down. Again, his biggest issue is being unwilling. Tackler. Now, again, we talked earlier about his injuries. Issue, hamstring. And that's another reason why he comes to Marshawn. And they both have similar hamstring issues. I know he returns in this game, though. He's just out for a couple plays because you see the clock only changed like a minute. Just does such a good job of mirroring these routes. And he's staying so tight, too. He doesn't give up a lot of separation on this play. Right? He's just staying so close to Williams. And he's able to break up on this play. Oh, no, that's a safety. My bad. Off coverage, playing the line. And then you see him read this route a little bit late on the diagnosis there, which is kind of rare. Again, trying to see him go for the strip, but I really need to see him be more willing tackler. That is the one big, big, big issue with him. That's like keeping him from being in that Marshawn Lattimore top 10 type range. Uh, it's his unwillingness to tackle. That's an issue with the film, by the way. It's not me. So, uh, yeah, again, just really, really big issue with him is his tackling. And it's not that he can't tackle. We've seen him bring guys down. It's not that he's the worst tackler itself. He, he really isn't. Uh, it's, it's just that he doesn't really want to. So... How was he in the bowl game? Obviously, Louisville completely got blown out by LSU. Uh, Leonard Fournette, serious guy, absolutely destroyed the Cardinals. Oops. So, let's see how he finished the year off. Sixers Bowl. Here off. So smooth out of his back pedal. That was 20, not 10. Shifting over. Seam playing zone, and then just his burst in recovery, well not really recovery speed, but his burst and his ability uh, to make up ground, and just in general cover ground, I mean you see his athletic ability to a T, he covers that 10 yards so quick. I just wish he was a willing tackler.
can return punts. He's not as explosive as Patrick Peterson was, I don't think. Some look from the nickel spot there. And that was him that got in on that, so uh, I will back this one up. So he's actually going to, this is a zone look from the nickel spot here. And we just see him drop all the way back. I think he's just going to undercut this route and break that pass up. Communicating with the defense. Very, very big leadership role. And we, we noticed that last year. Louisville got so much worse when Jair went down. Uh, another thing I love too is on this play, right? Looks to be some sort of curl route of some kind. Watch how little false steps he takes. He just gets so, so easily out of his break, out of his back pedal. It's so clean. So, um, there's so little waste of movement. Nickel, look here again. And there's, there's where his height factor comes in, right? And this is why his height is a concern. Not as able to, to match up with bigger receivers, which is why he projects as more of a nickel. But yeah, he seemed to do a great job of matching and mirroring this route. Great job of turning his head. Just a great high point throw by Etling. And actually, you see him get a little bit of a hand on that, but that was just a bit out of his reach. There was nothing that he really could have done from a technical standpoint to help him on that play. Just the only thing that would have really helped is being an inch or two taller. And can we see him try and go for the strip? If that throw wasn't so bad, that could have been an incompletion. Poison call. See him motion out. And I love how he stays in phase this whole play through, right? I mean, look at this ball is in the air, right? Look at where he is. He's step for step matching with the receiver. And look how, again, I can't emphasize enough. He knows he's in phase. He has the athleticism to stay in phase. He trusts that. He trusts his, his athleticism to, to be able to stay in phase with this receiver. So he's able to turn his head around ball. Well, so early in the route, so cleanly, and he just keeps the receiver a step for step in phase. Oh, shoot. fantastic, beautiful. So patient, and you see him break on this hitch. Very, very nice. Such little wasted movement. Communication. Takes the high zone. And that time he went for a tackle, it just stuck. Nice one by guys. Touching. And again, he's in the right play and brings him down. Or in the right place, I mean. And he's able to bring him down. And just look how he breaks and closes so quick. 
And he has a little bit of force behind the hip, too. Let's watch here. Such little waste of movement. His, he goes from that back pedal to his, his forward motion so quickly, so smoothly. It's fantastic. It's so Marshawn Lattimore. Right? You see the exact same thing there. In fact, that's actually a better look at it, right? He goes in the back pedal. Bam! Cuts right out of that with a T-step. So clean. Able to stay in phase with the receiver incomplete. Beautiful. Look at how clean he is with getting out. A little bit of a hold got away with. But yeah, I mean, he, he basically has every single physical tool that you could ask for uh, in a quarterback. Right, so going through my list here of things that I like for in a, in a corner, right? I have footwork down. Uh, my notes here are he's very, very solid in man. He doesn't really fall step a lot, as we just pointed out. Uh, he doesn't overstep forward prior to tell. I talked about that with his press earlier. Uh, very rarely utilizes a back pedal, uh, as he's already often already open and sidestepping down the field. Uh, but when he does, it's very, very hoppy and not really a one foot step behind the other. Uh, that was something that I noticed more this year, uh, which you guys will probably see uh, a little bit more in the 17 team we're about to go into. Uh, however, he doesn't really utilize a T-step often. However, when he does, uh, it's very, very clean, and we saw that in the last two plays for his LSU just now. Uh, he definitely has the potential to be able to do that. Uh, it's just... Um, what he has to do on the game play in his particular... Uh, assignments as well when he's in zone he's not necessarily going to t-step as much whereas when there's an underneath route like a curl or a hitch or a comeback they're going to be able to see him break on that ball a lot a lot cleaner uh press uh, he does show a good first punch at the line uh, and has the strength to sl slow receivers down uh, he can get aggressive at times when it comes to press i like to press earlier at the line than recommended at times Although, he can also struggle a bit with holding guys a, a bit long at times. So again, something that we saw him not do versus the Clemson game, he was very, very uh, passive with his press. However, as you've seen in other games, he can be aggressive with his press as well. So it's kind of nice because you get to see him do different things versus different teams. And we'll see that versus Purdue. Uh, because the issue, issue with his press is that he uses both hands. Uh, I prefer him to just use that one hand. Uh, and doesn't use the proper hand all the time as well. Uh, ball tracking. Definitely does a great job of turning his head for the ball and shows great hang movement. Looking for the ball even when he's not targeted. Uh, another positive is that he's always able to keep running with the receiver down the field and doesn't lose him while keeping his eyes on the ball. I've talked about that several times. He's able to open up but not completely lose sight of the receiver as well. Stance, very, very solid. Uh, feet in proper positioning, uh, bent well, arms, hips, etc. in the right position. Uh, needs to with the outside foot, not the inside, however, which keeps him from a perfect grade. Uh, and again, we see this more improved uh, with the Purdue tape. Speed and athleticism, uh, shows pure speed on returns and vertical coverage. Doesn't really use recovery speed a ton as he very rarely gets speed bad enough to need to recover. However, he does have that, as we saw in the Clemson tape. Um, definitely really has the speed and agility to recover with most, if not all, receivers, as he showed off the combine. Uh, he showed this off in man coverage as well against Mike Williams. Uh, his ability to break on balls is incredibly impressive, and he shows the athletic prowess to be able to cut off receivers from the ball, as we saw in the Clemson tape. Bonus here for his returnability and athleticism in general. Doesn't bite on double moves often and is able to show his recovery speed to keep up with the series through a tough time. Uh, as again, we saw in the Clemson tape. Hands. Uses hands well, concussion receptions, catches the ball on fair catches. A uh, great use of hands to get between the receiver and the ball and knock it loose. Uh, also has to show the ability to force fumbles as we saw in the Clemson tape. Uh, mental tracing intangibles. Shows strong ability to ring react to routes. Uh, seems to have a full grasp with the route tree across from him and does a great job of rigging the quarterback and receiver out of the snap. Uh, bonus points for breaking off of his route after throws and getting interceptions. Uh, run support. Gets off of blocks well and can shove blocks. 
At one point, Ashley utilizing a spin move like a defensive end to get around the receiver. Uh, I believe that was in the Purdue or Syracuse tape. Uh, has enough strength and the right mindset and vision to be able to help a team out in run support. However, tackling, however, is very, very poor. Uh, he's only a willing tackler in one-on-one -on -one situations, and his form does seem to be poor in general. Uh, always around the football, though, including on run plays, which does show off a high motor. Hips. Opens very, very nicely in and out of the snap. Not stiff and very, very smooth in his movements. While he might open up a bit soon at times, his fluidity off of the snap is very solid and he shouldn't the ability to open both inside and out. Balance, no issues with chipping, falling, etc. Easily keeps his feet, including versus double moves. Uh, aggressiveness does well with not being overly aggressive as soon as the ball is snapped and waits for a towel before coming into the receiver. He still has a very quick reaction time and shows that he can react quickly off the snap once the receivers declare. Uh, character wise, has a great job of communicating assignments on defense and is the clear leader of the Louisville secondary. This showed up in a significant way when he went down to injury as Louisville's defense was completely decimated. Uh, comes up big in big games as well as the clutch moments. We talked about that when it comes to tape as well. Uh, edge and force player, can he do that? Uh, yes, he showed the ability to come down on read options and force the QB to hand it off rather than, rather than uh, uh, running himself to the outside. Uh, for because in part due to a quick reaction from Jair. Also, we saw, saw in the Florida State tape he was able to break on that ball, uh, that fumble from Dylan Cook, and, and we saw in the uh, Florida State tape as well. Uh, he was, er, I mean, in the um, the LSU tape. He was able to get around the uh, receiver and make a play on the blitz as well. Uh, can he enforce the boundary? Uh, we haven't seen a lot of that yet, which is why I have him a fail for this particular section. Uh, it could be a result of him playing bail tech at times, but regardless, it's something that I want to see more of uh, in the NFL level. I would like to see him be a little bit more physical in enforcing the boundary. And also, another note too, is that something that he won't have to do as a nickel. Um, which is probably part of the reason why people see him as a nickel, not only due to his size, but because he doesn't enforce that boundary as much as he'd like to see. Uh, so that could be something to keep an eye on there as well. Uh, discipline both down the line, or at the line and down the field. You know, it's wondering how to be aggressive without taking penalties. Measurables. Uh, his arm length and hand size are fine. His height is not. I prefer to be closer to 6 foot to 5'10". Uh, however, 200 pounds is fine for a corner, 195, I don't really see an issue with that, it's not like 175 wiry. Uh, production, very, very nice, uh, does do a great job of getting interceptions. Durability, uh, missed about half of the season after returning the block kick versus Purdue, we'll see that in a minute. Uh, starts every game he's played over the last two years though, uh, so he's a two-year starter. Uh, also has a little bit of a minor issue with hamstrings, not consistent, uh, but it's something you keep an eye on. Uh, similar to a Slay, he can miss time over the course of a couple of years. A uh, Baylor Trail Tech, he does play Bale, especially when in zone. Uh, on the other hand, he does well with sticking to his man in general, and does a great job of following receivers in zone to make up for it across the category. He does a great job of staying in base, uh, so he doesn't exactly have an issue with playing Trail Tech. Motor and work ethic, great house on all plays. Run plays, the run towards the ball here until he's brought down and or the whistle's blown. Pass plays, he'll keep pursuing until the ball hits the ground. Very high motor player who never gives up on plays. The only issue here is with his tackling. Uh, return ability. Chuck has the ability to turn kicks, including has taken punts back. Uh, I do think that he could be an outside corner if you want to use him there. It was probably better inside due to his lack of tackling ability uh, on the outside, uh, as well as his lack of ability to force the boundary. Uh, so those are just some things to look for uh, for you guys, as well as the things we're going to talk about when we get into 17 tape. Uh, so here we go uh, versus Purdue. Obviously, this is the game he got injured. And again, we see his stance is so much more polished here. Does a little bit better job of getting a little bit more bend and a little bit more out. So glued with so uh, clean and smooth with opening, and just does such a great job of matching and mirroring routes.
put my turn. Obviously, we've seen his athleticism. Definitely has the ability to return. And if he had gotten past the lineman, that's a touchdown. Tony Kagan leading the defense, of course. And shout out to disciplined. Obviously, makes his contact within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Next within five yards. Oh, he gets a little unnecessary. That's fine. And it just keeps him down. Attitude. I like it. We can make a penalty every once in a while doing stuff like that. That's fine. A little bit of a false step there for once. Oh man, quarterback just completely missed it though. So. And again, even in zone coverage, just does this great job of matching and mirroring this route and staying disciplined. You can tell it's his own look, obviously, because he's lined up inside the receiver as this fit in him. And just, again, stays so disciplined in his zone, right? Stays disciplined, stays, and then he ends up matching that route. Very nice. Definitely has the ability to play both sword and man very, very, very well. Oh. So clean with his, his sidestep. Oh man. What you mean? And he's willing there. We got poor tackling form, uh, which is why I noted in my notes as well. And this is actually the play he gets injured. Uh, and this goes to point toward his motor though too. Alright, so he originally starts, starts off here. This kick gets blocked. So watch what he's going to do here, right? He's coming from off here. Now he knows that this play is still live. So what he's going to try and do is he's going to try and return this. And then right there when he trips, he injures his, his leg. Uh, he's not able to recover, not able to play, to play for a few weeks. So, uh, yes, there is that. Uh, and then they're just going to show that replay. So move on to Syracuse. Is this somebody on house for me? Sweet. Alright. Um... So here we go. This was after he returned from his injury uh, earlier in the year. Where's Purdue? And we see him still have that explosiveness. We see him a little bit more willing to tackle. Uh, at least on that play. Very nice. Again, poor form, but more willing. Again, I really like his improvement with his stance this year. Does a great job of being more bendy. own look and just is able to break on that. That's such a great job of getting off that break. Uh, 
Great job of staying patient on the screenplay. And again, one on one situation, so he actually goes for the tackle. That's such a great job of mirroring him down the field. But then watch this, right? So originally, he was mirroring this guy way down the field, right? However, he sees the Syracuse quarterback, whoever that is, throw this to this receiver here, right? So what does he do? He breaks on that route. Bam. That throw, easy pick. By the way, that was a pick. He did get a foot down. He was covering this guy way down the field. The teammate. Oh, I love that. I love that. Watch this. Right here. Bam. Celebrates with his teammate. Love it. Leader of the defense. Opens up a bit early. He's obviously going for this down the field route. His own look. Breaks on that screen. Forces a quarterback to keep it. Very, very nice. I love his football IQ. Side steps down the field nicely. In zone. And again, look at how he recovers from that double move, right? He, I wouldn't exactly say he bites on it because he doesn't exactly bite on the double move here. But watch what happens, right? He, he stops for this double move. But bam, look how quickly he gets out. Ah, I love that play. And that's something, if you're, if he goes to the team in the NFC North, right, like say he for some reason falls to the second goes to Cleveland, he has to play Antonio Brown. That's something Antonio Brown kills NFL corners on, on the weekly, is uh, stab and goes, double moves, things like that, right? But just watch what Jair does here, I'm getting out of this. Oh, so quick, so quick. Bam, recover so nicely. And his recovery speed plays into that. But again, he doesn't overcommit to it either, right? So while some of these corners right here, they're coming, well, the receiver doesn't exactly sell this the best either. I mean, if that's Antonio Brown, he probably does come up a little bit more than Jair does there. He just stops. He doesn't break. He doesn't move forward or anything. He keeps moving down the field. He just hesitates. It's so nice. Bail tech. Getting an off man zone look. Always around the ball, just doesn't get around the tackle. Zone look. Does a great job of seeing in phase. Making a play on that ball for seeing completion. Great scenes, great first punch out of his press. Definitely something that he improved on this year. Watch how he attacks at the line. Bam! See? And another thing, too, is he's patient enough, right? Like, he's still. Right here, he's still waiting, still being patient. But then, bam, when it's time to attack, he attacks. As I mentioned in my notes, I do wish that he used the right hand and the right arm and didn't use both, but nonetheless, still a nice explosive first punch. And active hands. His hands are so active in pass breakup situations. Watch this. Think the receiver has the ball? Nope. Jerry's just going to use his hands and knock that ball loose. Incomplete.
man. Dexter's hands cleanly between the receiver and his the body of the receiver and his hands. Mail tech look. Changes him down the field. And again, I love how he transitions between in and out of phase. So while originally he's out of phase here, right, he's about five-ish, maybe a little less than that yards behind the receiver, he uses his recovery speed to finish that play, get in between the receiver, get in phase with the receiver, and then checks the ball with his head and gets in phase with the receiver. No flag, because he's able to turn his head and check the football. Very nice. Great patience. This stay so disciplined in his zones. See, I was a huge fan of Singy Jones last year, right? I they're they're quite different players in their similarities and weaknesses. Uh, Singy was a little bit more of an outside guy, a little bit bigger, a little bit more physical, a little bit better in press, uh, a little bit more, a lot better in forcing the boundary. That was the main reason I loved him so much. But the one thing that makes Jair better than Sid is his ability to stay disciplined in his zone. Uh, while Sid didn't really have the eyes on his back of his head last year uh, in those zone reads to give up plays behind him in zones, Jair doesn't do that as often. I would say Jair is a little bit closer to Lattimore uh, than Sid, uh, especially from the athletic standpoint. Uh, Marshawn was a little bit more athletic than Sid he was last year. Uh, had the hamstring injuries that, that Jair has. Uh, they're both dual coverage corners. They can both play both man and zone. Uh, I do think Jair is a little bit better in zone than either of them are. Uh, but yeah. I do really like all three of them. I put all three of them in, in, as CB1s on most teams. So, and there's the spin. I talked earlier about how I wanted to see him utilize a disengage move uh, to get off receivers blocks and shed some blocks better. Uh, he can shed blocks, but I wanted to see him develop that move. I noted in my uh, notes I just showed you guys between 16 and 17 tape that he has a spin disengage, and you see it here, right? He tries to win the outside, so he just spins right around number 8. Now, one thing that intrigues me about that is I wonder if he could use that same move in a pass rushing situation on a nickel. Because if he can, if he can, obviously there's a difference between using a spin move versus an, an offensive tackle and a, a receiver, but if he can use a spin move on a receiver, maybe he's matched up with a running back in pass pro, and he can just spin move out of that and get a sack. So I'm wondering, obviously we've seen him blitz out of nickel several, several times, almost like a Mika Fitzpatrick in some ways. I'm wondering if we could see him do that at the next level. Uh, and, and when he's realized it's more of a nickel corner, maybe he develops some pass rushing. And develops a pass rushing run support, well, pass rushing coverage nickel corner. And becomes more of a three-phase guy. He just buying the screen. Does a great job of getting off of that route, and he's so quick. So quick. Watch this, right? He originally goes for that, bam, he breaks on it. So quick, and then he makes the one-on-one -on -one tackle. Down to the ground. Very, very nice. The dude is quick, the dude is fast, the dude is smooth. He's got quickness, agility, acceleration, explosion, burst. He got, he has it all from an athletic standpoint. He has the mental tools, he has the leadership capabilities, he has the character, he has the work ethic. He has the ball tracking ability, the football IQ. 
He has the technique. He has the back pedal when he needs it. He has the sidestep when he needs it. Uh, he has the hand usage. He has the ability to shed blocks. The ability to uh, read plays, diagnose plays. The, there's just very, very few and very, very big holes in this game. Next is size, ability to enforce the boundary and tackle. And again, you just seem to do a great job of diagnosing that play, breaking on that play, reading the run. And he's so consistent. I don't think he's had one bad game in Louis at Louisville. He's had a couple of bad plays, of course, but no one in this class hasn't. I love how active he, in he is with his hands. Watch how he just gets his hand between the body. Well, oh, kind of hard to see. But he does a great job of getting his hand between the receiver's hands and his body on that play. It completely shuts the block, stays in phase, North is like to run, reads the run play, finishes. The dude is so athletic and so technically sound. Side steps. Easy pick for the other guy. And of course, they were up by a lot, so I think they took him out after that. But yeah, there is a lot, a lot to like. Is the 17? I wonder if this is one. No, it's not, because they're not season one. All right, anyway, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up his Lance Zerling report uh, from NFL.com. Which I hear Alexander draft profile and we'll see what they have to say uh, and you guys tell me what you think uh, about this after what you guys have seen on both 16 and 17 tape uh, what you guys think uh, of this so as you guys can see here here are his results uh, 4 3 8 40 14 reps on the bench 35 inch vert uh, and then, of course, his explosion with his broad jump, very, very nice. His agility and quickness with his three calm, uh, six, seven, one, very, very nice. Uh, not Avante Maddox level, uh, but sure, very, very nice, like six, seven. Uh, I mean, his 20 yard shirt was at 398, which is about 200 better than, than Maddox. Uh, well, Alexander was just a three star prospect, he made only the top 70 corners. He was all future starter, and his speed, ball skills, and physical play on the outside. Uh, for sure. I uh, proved them right in 16, intercepting 5 passes, breaking up 9 others in 13 games. Took on our second team, all ACC honors. Alexander played in 12 games with 1 start on defense as a freshman, including an interception. Uh, he's also made a name for himself as a returner uh, in his first two seasons, uh, including 29 returns for 225 yards and 19 for 195, including a 70-yard touchdown return against Florida State. Uh, Alexander missed about half of the season this year with blocking hand injuries, but managed to start six of the seven games played this year. The one he didn't start was right after he came back. Uh, for those of you wondering why he didn't start all those games, uh, I was named honorable mentioning in the All-ACC. 
despite not playing half the year. He was still an honorable mention for an all-ACC team despite not playing for half of his games. That in itself is ridiculous. Uh, okay. Uh, strengths. Athletic and Top came back for the last three games of the season despite missing most of the games due to string knee and broken hand. Uh, I stay on a quarterback when he's in passing lane. Oh, whoops. I think I missed something. When he's able to, yep, I do like that. Aware and instinctive, of course. Spock Shev from zoning to his passing lanes. Curious playmaking traits, for sure. Quick response time when quarterback begins release. We've seen that several times. Smooth mover with plus acceleration to chase. Feet are light and sudden. Crowds and mirrors receivers release without panicking. Agreed. Stays connected to routes. Pattern reader capable of sudden stops to mirror comeback routes. And again, I taught this ability to mirror. I love it. Aggressive attacking catch point, uh, climbs on top of receivers and rips arms through potential catches. I, I love that. It's one of my favorite traits in quarterbacks. Now let's see some recovery burst on the deep ball and communicative with teammates. Negative gamely frame, unlikely to carry much more weight. Uh, honestly, for me, if you're 200 pounds, that's fine for a corner. Uh, injuries and missed time in Nate's 17 tape tricky to evaluate. Avoiding excess contact with blockers and appeared to lack his typical brand of aggressiveness. Uh, that is definitely true, though I don't really think he had a lot of that in 17 anyway. Uh, he just seemed unwilling to tackle to begin with. He needs to play with better knee bends from press. I did talk about that in 16, uh, for sure several times. Uh, I don't know if I saw that continue much in the 17. But it is definitely something that I noticed as well. Uh, read routes and create opportunities to attack throws with default is a safe play. Uh, so basically, instead of going for interceptions, he goes for pass deflections is what I'm getting from that. That's fine. Pass deflections is still doing your job and keeping the ball out of the receiver's hands. I don't see that as too big of a negative. Uh, can get grabbing man at times. Uh, maybe, I guess. I don't see an issue with it if it doesn't get called. Allows pace to widen and loses balance during transitions. I didn't see an issue with that in those four games uh, that we watched. I didn't really see too much of an issue with that over the grand scheme of the year either. Uh, or rather, the two years. Uh, gave up too many red zone touchdowns. I think part of that is because of height. If you're playing him at nickel instead of buying up 6 5 receivers, that won't happen as much. Uh, inconsistent getting head around. I absolutely disagree very, very, very strongly with that. I pointed out several times how he did a great job in getting his head around. That is not an issue. Inconsistent finishers to tackle and may struggle to get off on your box. Uh, I agree with his inconsistent finishing as a tackler. Uh, however, I'm not too worried about him getting off of blocks. Uh, I do think that he he can. Uh, maybe it's different when you're talking about like Julio Jones, for instance. Or if you have someone like John Ross blocking him, yeah, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, giant projection is second to third. I disagree. I, I give him a first round grade myself. Tease Tabor. Ugh, I hate that comp. There's nothing bad about Tease, especially as a Lions fan. He did fantastic last year, but they're completely different players. Uh, Twitching Quick Alexander is an instinctive cornerback with the ability, ability to anticipate routes and quickness to close on throws and make plays on the ball. Agreed. Team in 17 was uneven due to issues with the knee, which could raise concerns over his durability. Uh, when healthy, he has the potential to become a second corner, but teams maybe him as a full-time nickel was able to avoid the rigorous of excessive run support. So, uh, honestly, for me, uh, guys that I would more like to compare him to are a Chris Harris, uh, minus the tackling, a Marshawn Lattimore, minus the height and ability to play outside, or a Darius Slay, uh, once again, minus the, the height and the, the press. Uh, they're all in that same group to me of very, very athletic, clutch, highly instinctive players who are leaders on their defenses. Uh, both reliable, both, all three of them have injury histories to some, to some extent, uh, some less than others. And, and they're all just big time, big moment players, uh, who are going to make plays and, and create opportunities for your team. While well, being able to shadow and mirror number ones, uh, basically across the board. Uh, the only difference is Shadow is a little bit smaller, so I see him as more of a nickel, similar to a, a Harris role, uh, but more of a Marshawn, Lattimore type of skill set. 
so anyway, uh, how he first with Alliance, uh, obviously here he would be our, our nickel. We would have T's in his bigger size and more physical nature play outside. Uh, but he would be immediately the day one nickel starter. Uh, no doubt about that, I have no confidence he would be able to be out to, uh, um, on Jamal Agnew for nickel spot. Uh, and we would have one of the best shields and nickel corners in the league for the next four years. So, uh, I don't foresee him falling to 51 though. If he does, he has to be the pick. I'm going to be ticked. <laughs> um, I don't think he's going to play at 20 simply because of other needs, at least for the Lions. Uh, pending free agency. I think that that pick is basically a lock at this point between Deron Payne, unfortunately, or Harold Landry. Uh, at least from what has been put out there so far, uh, it doesn't seem like we're the biggest fans of Taven. Uh, it doesn't really seem like Mo is an option until he passes miracles. Uh, Ray is probably going to be gone. Chubb is probably going to be gone. Davenport, from what we've heard so far, doesn't exactly seem like their favorite option. I want to go for someone a little bit more polished. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I don't think... It, I mean, if it's between Geis and Jair, I, even then I would still take Geis. Uh, for us, I do think that Jair and another system and another place would be one of the best players in this class. Uh, he's probably going to end up a top 10 on my big board. But he has three really, really significant big time issues for him. And next, that he's probably limited to a nickel corner because of his lack of tackling and, and ability to force the boundary. He's probably too small uh, to play outside, even if you want him to, similar to Chris Harris uh, and uh, his tackling. Uh, so, yeah, uh, with that, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Jair is one of my favorite players in this class. Uh, definitely a lot to like. I highly encourage you guys to check out the rest of his tape. Uh, and I really hope for you guys that your team drafts him. Uh, unless you're the Rams, because the Rams don't need a corner anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really would not like to see him in, in Green Bay next year at all. I do not want to see him in, in Chicago. I don't think they take him unless he goes to the second. He's not a top eight player. Uh, I really do not want to see him in Minnesota. Obviously, Xavier Road. So that would be one of the best corner duos in football. Uh, so, anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, let us know who you guys want to see next, all that good stuff. Uh, and we'll see you guys again soon. So, for now, peace out. Bye.